Adelaide. All right, so let's talk, Tom, about what's coming down the pike here for Apple. If you have the Beige Book coming out and suggesting that uh, consumer spending is up just slightly, uh, personal experience would tell me that consumers will choose to spend on Apple devices or splurge on things like a new headset if that's the thing that they've been saving for. Tell me how you think that we're going into 2023 for Apple with China reopening and where the consumer is. So China reopening is a huge short-term boost for Apple and consistent with our view that the sales that were lost in the December quarter will be captured in the March quarter on uh, the China's, China's zero policy in the December quarter and that they weren't lost entirely. So I think that, as you pointed out, Contessa, consumers' willingness to spend uh, their discretionary income on Apple products, despite macroeconomic challenges, bodes well. What also bodes well is that the wireless carriers are essentially subsidizing the next generation iPhones to support their 5G network spend. So Apple's proven that it can do well, even in a challenging macroeconomic environment. So, so where are the headwinds, Tom, for Apple? China is still a headwind. So on a near-term basis, the good news is that you're going to see a rebound in consumer spending and the supply chain situation has improved. But we do anticipate that over the next couple of years, uh, Apple will address its over-dependence on China. Uh, the other good news, though, is that they had a projection of a 10 percentage point negative impact from a strong dollar in the December quarter. You're starting to see the dollar give back some gains against the pound, against the euro, so that might work in its favor. But the big headwind, again, is a challenging macroeconomic environment. The good news is consumers will spend uh, a great portion of their discretionary income on Apple's products, especially the iPhone. Have either of you, I'll start with you, Steve, seen really compelling evidence that Apple is ready to uh, reduce its dependence on China? A little bit, in, in small but significant ways. So, for example, they started producing iPhones in India, in India. Okay. a little bit earlier than Small it used amount. to. The small. It's not going to supplant China. It's not going to take away their their dependence on China. Absolutely not. Other places. And obviously, they don't want to tick off China, China. Yeah, of course uh, by not. saying of course we're not. moving our production here. Right. I mean, it, it would be so Of course not. And also, their silence spoke volumes about the protests that we saw. You know, they said they were yes. monitoring it, but we heard nothing from Apple about, you know, the ramifications of those protests and, and frankly, horrifying footage that we saw out of there. Yeah. So that, that's one issue. The other issue, so there are little pockets of places you're looking. Vietnam, Malaysia, those are all hot spots right now where they may turn to to start producing more products. A lot of that right now is happening, but it's mostly the accessories, the AirPods, mm -hmm, the watches, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. some Macs and things we, like we that. We had a segment yesterday on value-driven leadership, and, and, and Tim Cook was mentioned as one of the People would, leads with the values. Yes. That was not a case where he led with values, it no. would seem to me. Uh, Tom, let me ask you that same question. Do you see real serious at scale um, and attempts by, by Apple to, to, to not rid itself of its dependence on China, but reduce its dependence on China? Yeah, so definitely this is going to take multiple years. Uh, I think that the initial indications are uh, more reliance on India and then to a greater extent, uh, Asia and things of that nature. So I think that right now it's more of a need than anything that's put in place. But I do expect that this is Tim Cook's, you know, forte, uh, pun intended. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I do think that he's going to address this over time. And over the course of the next couple of years, they'll be a lot less dependent on China than they are today, which really is the biggest risk to the stock. All right. Uh, Tom, thank you very much. Steve, great as always thank to you. see you. Thank you.